Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now we're going to tackle something today that's been requested a few times and we're going to do a German Grenadier. Now this particular tutorial, this will work for anything from around 1943 onwards. And I just wanted to tackle this guy because a few guys have asked. And painting Germans is kind of like painting the French for the Napoleonic period. If you're playing for a while and you're collecting the period, you are almost certainly at some point going to end up painting some Germans. So it might pay to know how. <laughs> now, for the gamer or the collector or even the painter, the German army of the Second World War offers a lot of choices. Um, I have done a video on camouflage before for these guys in particular. And, you know, as far as tanks and different weaponry and stuff like that, it can be a very interesting period. So from that perspective alone, we're going to tackle this particular fella here. Now I'm going to use mostly Vallejo colors. I will make sure to list them in the description below, but there are a couple of Citadel shades, which I do strongly recommend anyway. So take a peek, see what you'd like to look off. So without any more mucking around, let's get started. Now to start off with, I've given him a primer of Uniform Gray from Army Painter. No surprises how it got that name. <laughs> uh, you can use any mid-tone gray though, whether it be Krylon, Halfords, uh, Citadel's Mechanicus Standard Grey also works quite well for this. What's important is that it's a nice, easy colour for us to get all of our others on top of. So, Uniform Grey is what I'm going to use. Now as well, you could leave his trousers grey. Uh, if you want a sort of veteran looking force, then some of the guys that were you know, wearing these trousers still had their old grey trousers. Uh, if you want to, you can leave it in the uniform colour. We're going to shade over them later. You don't need to fuss around too much with that just for the right shade of grey. What we're going to concentrate on is the field grey. Now if you go online and you ask, what colour should I paint my German field grey? You are going to be shown a photograph of 20 or 25 jackets, uh, all different shades of green and grey, and someone will tell you, these are all field grey. Now unfortunately that tells really only half the question. So the answer, rather, in that some of those are replicas, some of those have been stored poorly for 80 or so years. You know, these are, there's schools of thought, I'll say. So rather than get into the debate over what is field grey, we're going to use German field grey from Vallejo. This is a pretty bloody good colour, guys. You can't go too far wrong just using this. So let's crack it open, and we're going to paint most of him in field grey. Now, as with all of the Vallejo colors, you're going to want just a little bit of water in there to help it flow. And what we'll do now, this is not particularly difficult. Let's go over all of the uniform in field gray. Now, you don't have to be too careful about whether or not you hit the rifle or the skin or anything like that, because we are going to paint those later. But if you want to be tidy, you can do, but you just don't have to be. So I recommend if you're looking to get these guys on the table relatively quickly, you can concentrate more about bucketing this on now and then do some tidy up later with your next colors. Now his jacket and his cap are painted, but I elected to leave the trousers gray. We'll see how that looks. Just a little bit of variety in the squad will be nice. Plus it lets you see how it'll look if you do the same. Now we're going to get on to painting the skin, giving the base coat to this. And like always, I tend to paint skin a different way in every single video. <laughs> and today is no different. I've got here, this is red beige, beige red. So I've got beige red, and we're just going to do a couple of thin coats of this over all of the skin. Reason why we're going to go to the skin now is that uh, this is going to go close to things like rifle and equipment. So if we need to touch any of those up, we can either tidy them up while we're putting the wood on the gun, uh, or, you know, we're not so far removed from our field gray, we can tidy that up quite quickly with a little if we need to. Now we're going to paint in some wooden details. Now you can use any old brown you like for this. I've got Vallejo flat brown because I like quite a deep one for this. I'm going to paint in the entire rifle and anywhere that's going to be black later on I'm not too worried. I'm going to paint that brown as well because if I miss somewhere then once we've shaded it you're barely going to notice. Now as well on the back of him you're going to see he's got an entrenching tool handle that needs to be painted in too. And he's also got this little uh, what do you call it, water bottle. Now this had a felt cover over the bottom half of it, which, I mean, you could paint a lighter brown if you wanted to. Uh, the theory with that is that you could actually dunk it in water, like a running stream or something, 
and it would cool the water down inside. Now, <laughs> I don't know how accurate that would have been, but they had a felt cover. So like I said, you can paint that a different brown, maybe a lighter one. Uh, but for the purposes of this, save yourself the time, I think, and just paint it brown, whatever one you've got. Now, while that's drying, we're going to make a brief departure from the Vallejo paints, and I've got here Rackarth Flesh from Citadel. All I'm going to use this for is the little gaiters he's got around his ankles. Now, this works whether it's just ties or actual full-on gaiters. I'm using this, you could use German camo beige instead, but that normally takes three or four coats to get a decent uh, finish to that. Whereas this, for a nice plain canvas finish, you'll see just how easily that's going on. Now, when it comes to things that were or were not beige, you're going to see a lot of guides that are going to tell you to paint this bread bag on his back here in beige, but it wasn't. Now, I'll link to some sources in the description below. This was really more of a sort of khaki green color. So what I've got here, this is brown violet, and I'm just going to go over all of the bread bag. Be quite careful because you don't want to hit the, uh, the brown that you've already painted. But things like the, the mess tin, for example, you can just paint straight over the top of that. As well, I'm going to paint this section of cloth that he's got wrapped around his gas canister at the same time. And then one last shade of green we've got here. This is German Camo Dark Green, and I'm going to paint in his uh, mess tin and his gas cape canister in this. Now, there were all sorts of colors used for the, uh, for the mess tin. Green tended to be the most common. If you wanted to, in very, very late war, some of them even went out as plain aluminium. So it's up to you if that's how you want to go. I think it looks a little bit too shiny if you want to paint really bright metal on them. But that's your call. Now, the leather that was used for their equipment, the webbing in particular, was very dark. So I'm going to use, this is German Camo Black Brown. All right, it is super dark. <laughs> uh, if you want to, you can use a lighter one. Leather brown does work particularly well for this. And that's the color that I'm gonna paint his boots. But for the actual webbing and the leather straps and what have you, I'm gonna paint it in this almost black color. So the cover for his entrenching tool, for example, uh, the top cover of his water bottle should also be this color, and the Y strap of his webbing, so that and his belt, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush to do that, but just to quickly show you those areas, and we'll come back and see what they look like, if I can get my brush under there, hey, what they look like when we're done. Then just a little bit of leather brown to fill in his boots, and I also recommend if you've got any guys who have uh, exposed hair at the back of their hats, to switch on down to a smaller brush, and you can touch it in with some of this as well. Now that we've got all of the base coats done, it's time to make a choice on how we're going to shade the miniature. Now I've got here both Agrax Earthshade and Army Painter's Strong Tone. Now, people often say they're interchangeable, and I try and bring this up in every video where there's a, a choice to be made, because they're not really. They are almost identical in color, and they do a very similar thing, but there is a reason to pick one over the other. Now Strong Tone, when you use this, it's going to go into the recesses and give you all that deep recess shading that you want, same as Agrax Earthshade would. But it will also stain the colors, and it will bring the whole miniature down quite a bit. Now, what you can do from there is to layer over the base colors again before you highlight them, and this will give you a very nice and smooth transition of color. So, for example, here is a dude that I painted in a field gray, gave him a strong tone, then I've layered field gray over most of the uniform again, and then given him his little highlights. Now that makes a big difference because this will take you, this will take longer. Perfectly honest, if you want to go for that really smooth finish, it's time consuming, but it does work well for that. So that's why I've got it in my little arsenal because I like the stain effect sometimes. But if you're looking to just churn out infantry, Agrax Earthshade will give you the same color, but it doesn't stain the high parts of the model quite as much. You're going to get more of a recess shade with this. So it's for this reason we're going to stick to Agrax Earthshade for this particular miniature. Now don't be like me and forget the black stuff on his gun. Now, some people like to start from a, a dark silver. 
I really prefer, I think it looks more accurate if all the, the metal work on a weapon is just black. That's up to you though. So I've got my shade brush and some Agrax Earthshade. And we're just going to go over the whole miniature like we normally would. You don't need to be too generous with this in actual fact. You're really just looking to make sure that it gets into all the recesses. Gives you that nice deep shading. But anywhere that it sort of pulls on any flat areas, you can quickly drag it away with your brush while it's still wet. And let's just finish off the whole thing. See how that looks once it's dried. Now I've given that about half an hour to dry and what a difference it makes. You know, you could plonk them on the table and be quite happy. There are a few areas that we can highlight though, and we're going to get to those. But before I do that, I want to introduce a little more warmth to his skin. So I have here some Reichland Flesh Shade and any flesh shade that you like to use for this. Uh, I know Vallejo does one as well. We're just going to very lightly go over his skin in this. Uh, just because I think Agrax Earthshade, though it does give us plenty of shading, leaves him quite dark. Kind of a weird pale <laughs> color. So let's just go over his skin with a little of that now and we'll leave that to dry too. Now because we have shaded his skin twice, we can go back to beige red to highlight it. So I've got here a little of that, and all I'm going to do is just along some of the higher points of skin. I don't want to go overboard with this, just enough to reintroduce some of the shading and shape to his face. So things like cheekbones, uh, chin, get under there for the brow, and do the backs of his fingers. As much or as little of this as you like. Really, painting skin, like I said, I do it different all the time. It's up to you where you want to go with this. Now, once you've finished with that, you can quite happily leave it like this. I've got here, though, a little basic skin tone. This is still a Vallejo color. Uh, if you see anybody whose skin tone is like this, though, you probably want to push them out into the sun or, you know, prepare yourself some garlic. All I'm going to do is just a little bit, just along his chin, very corners of his cheekbones and we'll do on his the backs of his knuckles as well just enough to introduce that third stage of highlighting to his skin now to highlight his jacket we're going to go to green gray and i love green gray this works for so many things all you need just a little bit of water and you can do like i say as much of this as you like but I'm just going to use it to define some really sharp edges. So collar along his hat, some folds in his coat. You don't want to go crazy with this, otherwise it's going to very quickly overpower your, uh, your field gray. But once you've got a few little lines of this on, you'll start to take shape. So we'll come back once I've done a few of these and you can see what I mean. Now I've got here off white and just a little dab of this We'll paint the eagle on his cap. You can use any white for this, really. It doesn't actually matter too much. You just want to get that shape on there. Now I've got just a little bit of gun metal. Now I'm using the Model Air version they've got. You can brush it on quite happily, and I like that little bit of thinning it's got. I'm only going to use a tiny wee dot of this in just a couple of spots on the rifle. Uh, like the bolt, for example, just along the top here. Just enough to make it look like some of those bits are a little bit scuffed. And then we'll touch in, if you want to be fancy, uh, we'll do the buttons. There's not many of those. <laughs> some of these guys are going to have more buttons visible on their, uh, their webbing. So any belt buckles or stuff that you want to fill in, you can do this now with gunmetal. Then with those handful of highlights done and his base finished, he's ready to rock and roll. Now I wanted to put his base on very quickly just to show you that there's bits that I haven't highlighted. I haven't done his trousers, I haven't done his leather, any of his equipment. This is all still just, you know, base coat and shaded. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and shade those and highlight them however you fancied. But for the sake of getting a soldier ready and on the table, bonus, you know, <laughs> he is ready to go. And I think we spend enough time on his skin in this particular example. so. Let's concentrate on getting them out there. Now somebody did ask me uh, how I would go about painting these guys in 15 millimeter. And honestly, I would do it exactly the same way, except for the scale difference, I would start with green gray for their jackets. 
Uh, it will look very, very dark if you start with field gray as normal. So just use that instead. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully something there was interesting to you. Um, in particular, I like how the rifle came out. It's those little things that count. <laughs> you can feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. My Facebook and Twitter are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.